Hey guys, doing? Welcome to the Paradise Podcast. I'm your host, JT. It's Monday, July 18th. I'm out here in the park filming this podcast. I generally film this in the studio up in downtown or in the library, but due to a lack of availability today, I decided to just, well, lack of funds. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm hella broke right now. I couldn't afford to rent a room. But outside of that, I'm out here just doing good in the outside right now. It's actually pretty windy outside, but overall, it's pretty cool. I would think about doing this a lot more often, but, you know, I don't, like I said, the wind, the wind plus blowing in the microphone is kind of making it hard to communicate, so, you know, if, I think it's, for me, it's probably kind of relaxing, but as far as a listener, you know, you guys might not like having Mother Nature in your ear all day, so, I'll think about it, we'll see. Leave me your reviews and tell me what you think about it, because I know this is giving, like, some type of background feel different, background feel different to what you're used to. Anyway, um, today we're going to talk about a lot of things. In the Herald, we're going to get into the Herald with um, the debate that happened on CNN between David Clark and Don Lemon. And also we're going to talk about an uh, interesting, kind of funny situation happening in Cameroon, Africa. Well, supposedly happening, accused by Amnesty International, who, if you do not know, they're basically the international civil rights snitch of, of the world. And in discussion topic, we're going to be talking about um, my movie review for Ghostbusters 2, or Ghostbusters the remake, which came out a few weeks ago when I went with my aunt and my two nieces to go see it um, on Saturday. So we're going to talk about that, but first just to kind of see what's been going on in you guys' world, how have you been doing lately? What's been going on in your life? I've been doing pretty fine. Um, everything's been going great in my world, I mean... Outside of the money aspect, you know, I've been doing a lot more podcasting and doing a lot more writing. Um, I was up all last night trying to get my podcast approved on iHeartMedia because I feel like if I can get it there, if I can get it there and I can show that I have a lot of listeners and I can show I have a lot of people interacting with my podcast, I feel like it probably would be, you know, it probably would help my career a little bit more. And also, outside of that, you know, I, I, I hop back into my vegan diet. Well, I kind of hopped back into my de- vegan diet. See, what I did was I decided to cut out chicken, cut out pork, because I don't really like eating chicken like that unless it's really good. Like, if some Brazilians cooked it, then I'm definitely going to eat that chicken. I don't like tasting pork. I like pork, but the fat and the grease in it makes my stomach feel bad. But I do like fish, and I do love shrimp. So what I have been doing lately is... um. I've been eating, for the last two or three days, I've just been eating fruit. Like, I got up this morning, had watermelon and orange. Then I took a flour tortilla, which I, which was surprisingly low in fat. I didn't know the flour tortillas were so low in fat. And after that, I just ate that with the, um, with two Alaskan flounder tilapias and cut it up, put a little bit of hot chili sauce on it. Man, it was to die for. I promise you, you know... I went vegan before last year. I did it for four or six months. I forgot. It was from March to July or August. And it was a really great experience, and I really love it. But I had to stop because at the time, after I came back from L.A. from my failed adventure there, uh, I relocated to my grandmother's couch and had to eat. You know, I didn't have any money, so I had to eat what the hell they ate. And, you know, I got a little, gained a little bit of weight, and I felt upset about it. So now I'm like, you know what, I'm going to go back to eat, being vegan or at least eating healthier. And I had a phase too where I tried the um the thing where you do low carb like all meat basically eat all meat, but the problem with that is you know you have so much fat inside your in your lungs your body and everything else that you're like it just doesn't feel right like low carb diets they never make me feel right versus when I did the vegan diet which I don't want it even to be a diet anymore I want it to be like an actual lifestyle because the biggest problem that I have is worrying about if I'm going to gain weight. And one thing that vegan diets allow you is they allow you like a little bit of a safe goal to not have to worry about gaining weight because your body's going to do it naturally because you're not getting so much um, fat, fat filled protein. You know, to pick the pro- to pick the proper diet kind of depends on what you like. Luckily for me, you know, I just happen to love fruit and I happen to love salad and I happen to love stuff like that. So it kind of flows easier for me to not say for most people. But um. You know, it just depends. Also, outside of that, you know, I had a really, I had a really great time with my with my niece, with my uh, my cousins, nieces, and my aunt going to the theaters. And it was weird because you know, my nieces and us, my nieces and my my nieces and my um, aunt, you know, they're um, 
you know, there are these girls. It's two girls. It was three girls. It's my aunt. She's um, 30 years old. And my niece, other niece, she's six, seven years old. And the other one's 14 years old. And you see my big black ass just walking in between them into a movie theater with a big <laughs> thing of popcorn. I, was, I, kept say, I kept thinking to myself, man, I probably look so corny right now, but... That was the best time I'd had in my life. I mean, it, at least in this year. I mean, you know, I've been so focused on the podcast and everything else that I just haven't had time to be able to communicate with my family or get close to them, especially since I've cut the ties with so many of them. You know, I don't even talk to my brother anymore. I rarely talk to my mother anymore. You know, my father, we have never had good relations. So I've just been focused on my career. And, you know, I just had I hadn't took time to really enjoy anybody in my family for a long time and it's all because my birthday is coming up soon and that's something that's something i've always valued in my birthdays was having a lot of people around me but we will see what happens so anyway i want to get off that i want to get into the uh, herald topics so first topic i want to get into was um the debate that happened on cnn with don lemon and david clark now first off i know you guys are probably wondering who in the hell is Stevie J? I'm I'm just joking, being stupid. But in all seriousness, though, um, Don Lemon, he's a journalist for CNN. David Clark, he's a, um, a basically a he's basically a sheriff for the Milwaukee of Wisconsin. I'm, I feel reluctant in calling him a sheriff because he just really looks kind of stupid in some aspects. <laughs> he has a lot of interesting views about things, and um, to give you their background. David Clark is a Democratic is a Democratic sheriff from Milwaukee, um, but every he's famous because he's famous for having such conservative views. His views have always been considered very conservative. He's spoken very he's spoken very very radically against Black Lives Matter. He happens to be a supporter of the Donald Trump campaign. You know he's he's that he's that that he's that like that far right. He's really that far right. Like he's so far right he can't be like he's that far right. Versus with Don Lemon. Don Lemon is Don Lemon is hard because people have always gotten. If you don't know about Don Lemon, people have always historically gotten mad at Don Lemon because Don Lemon is African American, just like David Clark is African American. Which I, I should have noted that at first. They're both two African American males who both share points and views that people have criticized and said that they're left, they're rightist or they're acting anti-black. To me personally, I don't think Don Lemon acts anti-black or anything like that. I think it's just that Don Lemon is a journalist, and the problem with being a journalist who's not an opinion leader or a commentator is you have to keep your opinions to yourself, particularly when you're on a public programming. Versus with David Clark, David Clark is a sheriff, and he, even though he says he's democratic, he's always shared conservative views. He's always had it. He's always contra- He's always contradicted against people like Hillary Clinton. He's always had his own opinions about gun law and reform. He has said um, it was it was the year after year before last that he wanted the eradication of the Black Lives Matter movement, and he hated the anti police rhetoric that they spread. The reason I want to talk about these two men is because. Where they had a, a debate on CNN, and I thought it was interesting how I thought it was really interesting how reluctant David Clark was to simply mutter that police have been doing a terrible job lately. I thought it was very interesting how he couldn't see any fault in the police department, and Don Lemon was being very fair. You could look when you watch the video. I want you to Google David Clark versus Don Lemon. When you watch the video of their debate, you can see the look in David Clark's face and in his eyes, as if he's in a he's in some type of utter denial, some some determined denial about his view of the police department in America, and law enforcement in America. You know, he t- he asked him like he kept saying. He had told Don Lemon, I guess, at the beginning of the interview, because the interview begins with like when them almost in an argument, and he said, basically, oh, so you're in support of the black, so you're in support of anti-police movement, you're in support of anti-police rhetoric, because he's in the, and Don Lemon, like, and Don Lemon kept telling him, I'm neither a supporter of Black Lives Matter, I'm neither a denier, I'm not a neither supporter or a contradictor of Black Lives Matter, but I'm simply asking you questions. If you can't answer these questions, I have a conversation, then you're free to leave when we get into the interview. Now. He had never, and it's, he's really, when you watch the interview, you can see, like, like I said, you can see, like, when David Clark was, how he was talking to him, like, he was really sensitive about the issue. Then, when he kept, he kept getting into denial, talking about, um, there is no, there is no, uh, 
I know. I wish I could do his voice because his voice is hella funny to me. It's like there is no, there is no evidence. And then Don Lemon has said, "Well, the person that said, the person that said that there actually is a higher rate of black people suffering violence from the police than others." And then, and the sheriff said, "There is the the president is lying. The president is lying." The sheriff said on CNN, "The president is lying." He is lying. He has been lying forever. The studies show, the studies show, and then they tried to compare a study by a Harvard professor, um, which I read that same study. The study that they tried to pick up to compare the rates of black people killed by the police or white people killed by the police. I read that study. I'm going to tell you why I didn't qualify the study. The study showed that as far as, as, as the most aggressive acts that the police have done to any type of ma- any male, white, black and white people suffer the same. But it did show that police are more aggressive with black males than white males. But the reason why the reason why I kind of have false belief in that study is because that study was only based on ten major police departments in California, Texas, Louisiana, and I want to say it was New York or Georgia. Now, three of the last shootings that have happened to black people in the past aren't in neither of those states. One was in Mis- one was in Michigan, one was in Illinois, one was in Florida. You can't, you can't. The only one that was in, the only one that was in any of those states that he just um, that he just mentioned was um, was the one that happened in Louisiana with Baton Rouge. You can't give off. Oh, and by the way, the one that I said was in Michigan, I meant Minnesota. I was talking about the Philando Steel one. <clears throat> so that's you can't. I don't think that was a really. I don't think that was a really good example of a study to have. Um, but at the end of the day, at the end of the day, you know, that's just his research. But with David Clark, what he was saying to Don Lemon, I feel personally, judging him, reading off of his history, you know, him being a conservative viewed person, him being a sheriff, you know, and plus, I think the problem with David Clark is, is the problem with David Clark is he's one of those people who's so, I don't even think he really believes the rhetoric that he says. I, don't, I think he's in the same situation with Tommy Lauren because they're those type of people who, you know, actually he has a, to speaking of Tommy Lauren, David Clark actually has a podcast on the same network as Tommy Lauren called The People's Sheriff or People's Clark, People's Sheriff, People's Talk. I don't care. I'm not going to, I'm not going to shout out that podcast, but they have, they both have that type of matter to me where I feel like I don't even, I don't even think they really believe their own rhetoric. You know, I think most of the time, I think they're just... I think they're really just saying what I think they're really just saying what they think the people want to hear. I think they're just saying what their audience wants to hear. And the problem the problem with the problem with that is the problem with that is is there really ain't no problem with that at least until you get to the grave. And that's really what it's all about. There's no problem with that, at least until you get to the grave and you can really look look at yourself in the face and say, you know what, I'm comfortable with the decisions and the rhetoric that I spent while I was alive. And because we're having so many, so we're, because we're in a point in history, in, because we're in a point of time now where we're having so many incidents, we're racist becoming a conversation between us and others. We have to have these conversations and we have to form opinions. When I look at David Clark and I look at Dom, Tommy Lauren and even Suzanne, um, that one lady who got into an argument with D.O. Hughley last week, I, I might post a link in that in my, um, in my Facebook if you want to check that out. I feel like they're really just saying what they feel is right to keep going along with their to keep to keep whoever's invested in their pockets investing to keep whoever's whoever's pulling the strings behind them pleased like because i can't see that here's the issue about the black lives matter movement and here's the issue about the cops killing black people the problem with that is when you say the problem with that is is people nowadays are there are they, they try to put you into a box where you can only agree with one you can either be you can either say, okay, black people are suffering at the hands of police officers a little bit more than maybe white people are suffering, or you can also say, you know what, they're making it up. They're lying. It's not happening. We're not giving it any room for it to be more of a moral issue than a political party or conservative or democratic issue. At a certain point, 
you have to question somebody's morality in the situation. I feel that that's why I say I don't believe David Clark is really the believes the shit that he says. I don't believe Tommy Lauren believes half the shit that she says. I think she just says clickbait. This stuff that she knows if somebody's scrolling up down their phone, they see her video pop up when it says fuck niggas today, they're going to click on it. I want you to tell me what you think about that. I want you to tell me how you feel about clickbait. Because I feel like we have a lot of that. We have too much of that nowadays. And even with podcasters and ra- well, more with radio hosts, I feel like you have a lot of that now. You have a lot of people who just try to say the most radical thing to piss you off so you can get mad and be like, oh, damn, no, it happened. That's crazy. You know, a lot of people have accused Charlemagne the God of doing that. A lot of people have accused Howard Stern of doing that. But those two, I don't really think they're clickbait or shock jocks. That's another term for it. I just think they're just people who really who have their own opinions and they feel strong about them. But I want you to tell me about that. Also, I would love for you to go and look up that up. David Clark versus Don Lemon debate. It was a very interesting debate. They, they had some, um, it was only four, half, four and a half minutes long. But when you, I just want you to pay attention to how David Clark's facial features looked in that show, in that movie, in that um, debate. And I'm not just talking about the fact that he had a beard like a, a character from Spartacus. But I just want you to see. And I want you to tell me what do you think. Also, outside of that, I read a very interesting article on BBC. Um, there's a country in Africa, in West Africa, called Cameroon. And they, like a lot of surrounding countries, have suffered at the hands of the Boko Haram, the ISIS affiliated radical terrorist group. Their name, Boko Haram, means Western education is forbidden in hostile language. And Amnesty International, the civil rights snitches international of the world, they. They had did a report saying that a lot of the suspected members of Boko Haram, um, who are being persecuted by the government, and by who are being co- persecuted by Cameroon and other surrounding countries, which is very well, are locked in jails in Cameroon and dying from mal from disease and malnutrition and being tortured to death in their jail s- systems. And they said that now this. Is, stop right there and let you know something if you're not familiar with Bo- who Boko Haram is they're basically like ISIS except they're in Africa now when I first read the report I laughed my ass off because I was like oh yeah that's what they need they need to get in there and suffer that's what I'm talking about Put I'll kill all them motherfuckers I don't care but then you know I considered but then I considered a little bit different when I scrolled down the article just a little bit more and I also read that Amnesty International said they actually have people in there who aren't even who aren't, who might not even be ISIS, but they just might be suspected of being a part of ISIS. Now, the Cameroonian government governor or president has said that that's not true. You know, that's a, that study is false and is wrong. You know, it is what it is. I, I don't know, know how, how, um, I don't know how true it is. It's kind of hard for me to say. Although I will say, I do kind of feel happy knowing that. Um, I do kind of feel happy knowing that. I do kind of feel happy knowing that um, you have all of those terrorists suffering for what they're doing, and I'm happy about that. I'm happy that you got that happening because I can't stand Boko Haram. So I laughed my ass off when I first found out that they were locked up, but then I thought I started thinking about, you know, what if you locked up the wrong person? And it brought up an interesting discussion with me because it brought up an interesting thought in my mind because with humans naturally, When we have somebody who's doing something to us, if you have somebody who's bullying you, if you have somebody who's talking shit to you, if you have somebody who's doing something to you in an inappropriate manner, you start to look at that person as less than human. You start to stop looking at that person as a fellow human being and start to look at them as a foe. And in this situation, I was wondering, like, how... How much, how much morality and compassion can you really have for somebody who might be considered evil? Because when you see somebody who's a part of a terrorist organization or part of a gang, in my mind, I automatically categorize them as evil. And when you do, you know, like it's like how when you watch the news, you'll see them take somebody who got killed or take somebody who died who was a criminal, and they'll try to find all their whole criminal background and try to portray them as somebody evil and try to explain this is why they should have been killed because they this is why your morality should say this person should be okay with being you should be okay with this person dying because he wasn't a good person and uh, and i was thinking about that 
you know, particularly with these terrorists, because these damn radical terrorists are popping up everywhere. I had a hella, I had a hella long debate about this with somebody too on YouTube. Um, I went to the Rush Limbaugh podcast on YouTube, and I went on there, and I was talking with the gentleman on there about um, Islam. He said, the guy said, I'm sick of Islam, I'm sick of liberals, I'm sick of this, I'm sick of that. He said, I'm sick of progressives. Now, one thing I'm going to say, how could you possibly be sick of somebody who has the title progressive? That just sounds weird to me. Like, how could you be, how could you have an issue with somebody saying they want to be progressive? I never got that. Now, I'm not talking about the insurance company, of course. I mean, hell, be Geico, progressive, I'll say whatever you want to be. But, like, how could you really have an issue with somebody who says they want to be progressive in the world? Like, that just seems odd to me. That goes back to what I'm saying about you having to choose sides. But anyway, we were talking about terrorism, Islamic terrorism, quote unquote, as they say, these Islamists. I hate that term, too. And I said, he said, I'm sick of Islam. I'm sick of this. I'm sick of that. I said, you're not sick of Islam. You're not sick of terrorists. You're sick of radical groups that happen to be Islam, who happen to be followers of Islam, misguided followers of Islam. There's a difference. Then what he said was, is no, I'm sick of Islam. They always do this. They always do that. This and this. this. He, he basically said they all follow. They all follow Allah. They they all worship Islam. So therefore, they're all bad. They're all terrorists. And then I said, okay. So do you see Christians like that? Do you see the Nazi groups? Do you see the Nazi group that were Christian? Do you see the Jim Jones following groups? And do you even see the guy who did the um, who did the big murders? Um, what's his name? Charles Manson following. Do you see those three men and their followings as Christians? Technically, that how do how do you not see Christianity with that same kind of um, that same type of animosity, that same type of generalization that you put on Islam? And he said, "No, dear, you stupid. They're not even the same thing." He said, "Nazis aren't even Christian. You don't even know what you're talking about." So then I put a quote under his post by um, Adolf Hitler that said. We do not tolerate any attacks against Christian ideals. Our movement is Christian. Then I also said that, okay, so if that's the case, if that's the case, if if those aren't good examples of Christianity, how could you not look at the leaders of ISIS, the leaders of Al Qaeda, and the leaders of um, of Boko Haram as people who are misguiding underprivileged youth with misguided Islamic ideals? They're not a part of Islam. They're a part of their own group, but they're using Islam to forward the ideals. Because another thing that he had told me was Adolf Hitler just used the Catholic Church to advance his movement. And I said, okay, so they probably they're using the they're using Islamic ideals to forward their movement. It's almost the same concept. It's basically the same concept. I said, how can you how could you look at another ethnic group and they did the same thing, but because they're black because they're black or they're Middle Eastern, they're automatically wrong. They're automatically this, automatically that. The point I'm making in this is, because I know it might sound like I'm rambling, we never look at, we never look at all, the total, the totality of Christianity as wrong because of what Jim Jones did or because of what the Nazis did, Adolf Hitler did. But we look at all of Islam. We look at anybody who's Muslim as a terrorist, as somebody who's a radical or this and that, all these little terrible terms that they give from our people because of what a few... Or because of what a few groups are doing. And the media is not helping because the media just keeps portraying it over and over again. And they're quick to hop on. Like, you know that situation that happened with the gay club shooting in Orlando last month? And they said that the guy was a part of ISIS and everything like that. Come to find out, he wasn't even part of ISIS. He had nothing to do with ISIS at all. He was a gay man who didn't need... And the funny thing about that, I, I, this really struck my mind. He never even admitted being a part of ISIS. He never even said anything to have to do with ISIS. He was simply a gay man who was scared to come out of the closet, and he just happened to be Muslim. He happened to be a, a, a Middle Eastern man. But do you see how the media took him and manipulated him and turned him into a terrorist? They didn't even wait. You just saw a brown person and said, okay, he, you know what? He said he was part of ISIS just to get that clickbait, just to get those listens. You know, it's crazy, man. I... So I don't know. It's like we have a very mixed morality when it comes to how we treat how we treat people, and I, I derive really far off topic from the uh, situation in Cameroon. But I just was thinking about that. It's hella deep. I want you to tell me what do you think about that? What do you think about what do you think about how we look at Muslims versus how we look at Christians? Because like I said, at the end of the day, we're at a point now in the world where, regardless of how you feel, we're at a point now that regardless of how you feel about it. 
we have to have the discussion. You know, it's just it's just how it's just the point we're at in life right now. But also, last thing I want to top into top of the discussion topic was I went to go see the movie Ghostbusters in the theaters. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. I had low expectations for the movie prior to arriving. You know, I'm I, I had very very low expectations because I had read a lot of people saying it was gar read a lot of reviews saying it was garbage. You know, I had to also remember that these reviews were from middle aged old men who still ate Domino's pizza and Little Caesars every day while watching football, and they might not have the same taste in TV that I have. But I watched the movie and I was actually shocked in how funny it was. I'm going to be all the way honest with you. I was very shocked in how funny it was, and it was. It was. It wasn't like ha ha funny. Like I watched Central Intelligence too, and compared to Central Intelligence, it wasn't as funny as Central Intelligence, but it was funny. And the the it was they did good. You know, um, shout out to my girl Leslie. Um, Leslie Big Les. She's a famous black comedian. She's the black girl in the pro in the movie. If you're not familiar with what she does, and I was shocked. She actually was pretty funny. She was pretty funny. I expected her to be more hilarious because she's been doing comedy for a hell of a long. She's been putting it down for a hell of a long time. So I expected her to be a little bit more funnier. But other than that, she was, she did good. She did good. What shocked me even more was they had Thor in the movie, Chris Hemsworth. They had him play a receptionist, like the stereotypical hot guy, except that he was hecka stupid. So he did like hella stupid stuff, you know, just to make him like kind of quirky. He was he was he was funny. Honestly, in my opinion, I think he was the funniest guy. The funniest feature in the film was because they made him so stupid. They made him so stupid that it was just funny. You know, you got this guy. He's fucking doing stuff like like at one point in the movie, he says he um he said, I got something in my I, I hear something I got something in my ear and he kept rubbing his eyes or like when he when they try to teach him how to answer the phone correctly, he just is he is, is, I can't even explain that much better. He he was just hella stupid. It was a it was hella funny. I would recommend that you guys go see it. I didn't see the first one, so I don't have anything to compare it to. Well, I, I, I technically did see the first one, but I just didn't watch the whole thing. I, you know, this was I was four years old and I saw it, and I only saw like half of the end. And it was weird was when I was watching the movie. You know, keep in mind we're in the theater. You had a lot of people yelling out like, "Oh, that's such and such. Oh, that's such and such." When these hella old people will pull up, will pull up on the film. Like when Dan Aykroyd made a cameo in the film, which I know who he is. I know he played in the first one. Everybody was like, oh! And then when this other black guy showed up at the end, everybody was like, oh! And then I was talking to my aunt about it, and she said, you know what? Those other people who they kept oohing and aahing for, they were probably like Dan Aykroyd. They probably were like, they probably were people who were in the first films or first film, and you just, you had people in the theater who remembered them. You know, because Ghostbusters actually had, like, a kind of cult following. You know, it had a video game. It had cards. You know, it had a whole little cult following to it. So, it was cool. It's just it was before my time. You know, this was in the 80s. But, overall, the film was good. I would recommend that you go see it. I'm thinking about to... <laughs> I'm thinking about going today and seeing Tarzan. That's going to be a good one. I know for a fact that's probably going to be a really good one. Um... I would have went to go see it on Saturday, but I had my little niece with me. She's seven, so she couldn't go. She probably couldn't understand the concept. And plus, they were probably going to have a bunch of um, sex in it. She's so I'm, I miss my baby now. She's so adorable. I'm gonna take. I'm, I would. You know, she's one of the few people who. She's one of the few kids who makes you wonder what would it be like to have kids. You know, it makes you wonder what would it be like to have a daughter, or what would it be like to take a kid, take my little girl to the movies with me and make have her be like my little side click, sidekick wherever I go. You know, it's an interesting thing. And I know some of you guys who I'm talking to, some of you guys are mothers, some of you guys are fathers. So, I'm always wondering, I'm always wondering, you know, what would you guys, I'm always wondering what would it be like to be in you guys' place? What would it be like to be in your role? But then, you know, also I know that I am quite far from father material in any aspect. I, I can't change diapers. I can feed. I can cook you some good food. But, you know, as far as changing diapers and taking care of you well, you know, I'm, um, we're going to have a little bit of a problem because I'm terrible at all of that. But it is what it is, you know. If I get the opportunity to take care of my, take care of a, a child, you know, 
if I'm cursed with the child, we know, we'll see what happens. And I don't mean all children are cursed. I just, I'll just say, I just mean all black children are curses. I'm joking, I'm joking. But in the meantime, I'm going to this Lee guy. That means turn off this podcast. Um, tell me how you guys felt about the background. I want to do something better about that. I know for about like five minutes or so, the filter was up against the microphone. And I apologize about that as well. But, you know, I'm going to be back here again tomorrow. Podcasts are going to be out at 12 p.m. as always. It's been a pleasure talking to all of you guys. I love you. My name is JT. This has been the Paradise Podcast. Thank you.